We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as you can see, <clears throat> the scripture behind me, that's what we're going to be our group mantra. Um, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Um, so we're going to talk about a little bit today what that means and how do we go about doing that? What I like to do is before, you know, we read a scripture is sometimes read what comes before that or sometimes read what comes after that. But sometimes it loses its context and people um, use it for different things. So let's, uh, in order to get the full meaning of it, let's, let's, let's go a little ahead of that before we get to uh, 633. We're going to end there, but let's start. We have Matthew 6, starting at verse 19. 619. And we're going to start. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one, and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You, you cannot serve both God and money. Amazing. So therefore, so in other words, therefore I tell you, I love when he said that, I tell you, and these are, in my Bible are in red, so that means Jesus is talking, so it's real important. So these are all red words, not mine. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, reap, or store away in barns. Yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Why, who of you by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. And why do you worry about clothes? So see how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was just like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So, do not worry, saying, what, we, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But here we go. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen. Seek first the kingdom. But Jesus makes it clear that living for personal gain will only lead to anxiety. Um, materialism and anxiety are the two enemies of spiritual growth. They said you can't serve two masters. Um, so what does it mean <clears throat> seek the kingdom of God? You know, it's more than a simple command, I guess. Um, you know, it just talks about the worries of the world. Um, that's basically what the scripture says. But don't miss the end where he promises um, that he will give you exactly what you need. And we can so we can trust the Lord. Turn to uh, Matthew 26, 41. We're going to be doing some, keep your Bibles handy here. Matthew 26, 41. 
So it says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You know, Jesus warned the disciples about, you know, being not paying attention and worrying about worldly concerns so that, you know, we can, um, and we can counter them by seeking God and his righteousness. So, you know, watch out, be prayerful, um, that you will not fall into temptation. The, you know, God calls us to seek his kingdom instead of worrying about what we're going to eat, what we're going to dress, worrying about temporary things, superficial concerns. Um, you know, we, this verse can keep us uh, on an eternal perspective as we, you know, cross off each day of the calendar. So like we were talking about before, you know, everyone wants to, oh, it's a new year. Are we going to, you know, the old one's gone. You know, no, it's, we can cross off each day of the calendar. So it's daily, not just, oh, it's 2021 now. There's going to be different things now. Um, we have a new president, you know, all these things are new. But uh, each day we are to seek the kingdom of God. Um we are called to refuse to worry and refuse to be anxious instead um, seeking the kingdom. So what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? Turn to Jeremiah 29, 13. How do we do that? 29, 13. Twenty nine thirteen says, you <clears throat> will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So that's one of the things how we can seek and find the Lord. Um, so seeking God's kingdom means that we've made a conscious decision to turn toward God versus anxiety, the worry, or materialism. So if you are worried about things all the time and you're anxious about things all the time and you're trying to gain materialism, you're not seeking God. Because he says, don't worry about these things. So we are, if you're seeking the Lord, you made a decision to not do those things. You can't serve two masters. You can't be seeking material gains all the time. You can't be worrying about it. Every time something goes wrong, you fall apart. And you can't be anxious about what you will eat, what you will wear, and seek God's kingdom at the same time. Those two don't work together. <clears throat> so how can we do this? So what are, what are some of the ways that we can we can seek God's kingdom. And that's every day, not just on Sunday. Um, it's fine going to church here in the sermon, but not, you know, one day a week. It's a daily um, effort to seek the kingdom of God. So the first one uh, is through prayer. Turn to First Thessalonians. These are the ways that we can seek the kingdom of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. And it says, be joyful always. That's verse 16. 17 says, pray continually. Pray continually. You know, a lot of people, I know a guy that, um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, well, I'll pray for you. You know, instead of saying that, stop right there. Someone needs prayer, just, I know a guy that would do that. It was just, you know, it's like, oh, wow. You're, you know, we were, we were at, he, he lives in Atlanta. We were there, we were getting ready to leave and, and come back home. And he's just like, let me pray for you. You know, just right there, just like, man. So when someone asks for prayer or you say you're going to pray, pray, continue. Then don't stop then. Pray after they, after they leave your presence. Um, 
Jesus spoke to his father often. So that, that shows you the importance of prayer. Um, turn to Matthew 26, go back there again. Matthew 26, verses 39, 42, and 44, just shows you the importance of prayer. Um, verse um, 39 says, <clears throat> going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, is it possible May this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Verse 42, he went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. And verse 44, so he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. So, you know, that... It showed you how Jesus felt about prayer, um, you know, how intimate he was with the Father. And so we have that opportunity to have the same thing in our lives uh, through prayer, continually praying without ceasing all times. Um, another way to seek God's kingdom, and this is every day, is through Bible reading. Um, our Father wants to meet with us personally. We need to have a personal relationship with our Father. And we can do that through scripture. Um, you know, instead of, like I said before, relying on, you know, a sermon on Sunday, you know, which we, good sermons are good, but why just do that? When we are allowed to have a personal relationship with our Father, and that's the difference between Christianity and all the other religions. Is that they don't have a personal relationship. They don't have Jesus. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. Um, so turn to Psalm 119, verse 9. Yes. So through Bible reading. <clears throat> 119, 9. And it says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. And that's through the Bible. Um, God gave us his word so that we can remain pure. And that's one way to seek the kingdom. We are strengthened to stand firm against sin by reading the word. This means seeking first God's kingdom. You know, when we pray, this being said that we, we talk to God. When we read the Bible, God is talking to us. So if you're pursuing the Lord, you have to do both. You got to talk to God and you got to read the word so God can talk to you. That's one way to Pursuing. Um, um, oh, another way of pursuing God daily is through worship. You know, you can worship God anywhere. You know, I, I see these uh, things on the news. Christians are protesting that they can't go to church. You know, um, you don't need a church to worship God. You know, we we watch online. Our church has, we have four different services on Sunday, four different locations, the same church. Um, we watch four services every Sunday. I am right now doing four Bible study Zoom classes. You know, there's no protest that I can't go to church. We're in church right now. This is how Paul... And Acts, that's how they started churches. Small groups met in people's homes. And so we're complaining that we can't go to church. And we got to wear masks and protesting and, and putting our, our lives and our Christian brothers in danger by 
you know, not wearing masks out there and congregating. And um, I'm having more church now <laughs> than I did before the pandemic. Um, that's because I'm pursuing the Lord. That's because I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be given to me. Um, so people think they need a church. You know, a lot of times people are, you know, not going to church or giving up on the Lord because of the circumstances. But all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord. So how can we pursue God? Another way is through repentance. You know, um, John the Baptist says, repent, or the kingdom of heaven is near. So, um, you know, the Lord desires all to come to him, turning away from their sins. So, our, whether, you know, our, our repentance can lead to our salvation, um, our relationship with, with the Lord, um, seeking God's kingdom by leaning and trusting on him instead of, of, of our own understanding. And repenting um, allows us to do that. Another way to seek the Lord daily is Bible verse memorization. Um, you know, Ponzi and Lauren are really good at doing that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I can't memorize stuff. But if you think about it, there's how many songs do you know verbatim? <clears throat> how many old TV shows that you can sing? You know, I don't know you guys are old enough, but I can sing Bill Hillbilly's song verbatim, Gilligan's Island verbatim. Um, and so you can memorize things. And how did, how did I be able to do it? Because I heard it over and over again. So if you're meditating in the word, um, you, you know, you, you can memorize scripture. Um, and it's one way to combat temptation and to not to grow anxious is to know God's word. So you need to know God's word. You need to know that, um, you know, when someone asks you or your spouse or your family asks you to do, do things for them, you know, you didn't know that Mark 8, 34 says, deny yourself. Do you want to be a follower of Christ? You know, if you're mistreating your wife, you need to know that 1 Peter 3, 7 says that your prayers may be hindered for doing so. Um, you're concerned about your future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, give you a hope in the future. Um, you know, everyone's, I see all these posts on Facebook. Oh, you know, it feeds from believers as well. Oh, we got a new president. Everything is going to be great. You know, you need to know Isaiah 9, 6 says, for the government shall rest on his shoulders. So you wouldn't be pursuing all these things if you knew the word of God. And it's going to help you to uh, overcome temptation. You know, we, we just go off and do our own things and not, you know, not knowing what the word of God says. So how will you seek his kingdom if you don't know what the word of God says? Uh, go to Psalm 119 again, verse 11. One nineteen eleven, And it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Right there. I've, I've hidden the word, I've memorized it, I've internalized it, I understand it, so that I might not sin against you. you know, knowing the word of God keeps people, you know, oh, I don't know, you know, I'll just it just happened. I just, you know, by accident. No, it's because you're not following the word, you're not pursuing God and his righteousness. You don't know the word of God. Um, it's a way to help you to be strong in the Lord. You cast off temptations um, to keep you strong. Um, 
these are things that we can do to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's the command that God has given us. How else can we do it? You know, you can praise. You worship, and you can praise the Lord. You know, you like praise, right? Everyone likes praise. How much more do you think God loves you to praise him? Um, turn to Psalm 22, 33. Psalm 22, is that right? No, I'm sorry. Mm. Um, Psalm 100, Psalm 100, 104, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. Hallelujah. Um, I said before, you can worship, you can praise to God anywhere. In your car, Rudy is in his truck. Praise the Lord, Rudy. You can praise God anywhere you are. Um, Psalm 22, 3. So we draw into his presence. Psalm 22, 3. Says, yet you are enthroned as a holy one. You are the praise of Israel. Um, you know, once we, you know, are convicted, you know, we should be stirred into action to praise. This is where we can uh, seek the kingdom of him and his righteousness. So let's see here. I think I missed my thing here. Yeah, so what it, you know, what does it mean to seek God's kingdom? You ever play hide and seek when you were a kid? When you were it, you you try to find the person, every nook and cranny, and try to find a person. So that's what it means to seek the God's kingdom. Um that we need to look for him everywhere. Okay, we also need to give thanksgiving. That we should be thanking the Lord for all that we have. Um, and giving honor to God. I think I'm going to be honest. Okay. All right. So even when times are tough, <clears throat> we need to thank God above all. You know, we keep hearing that phrase, in these troubling times. <laughs> you know, that's what we just need to seek the Lord. Um, seeking him above all else in the case that our trust in God, I could, we could be seeking something else. So that we need to seek God first, his kingdom, and then the promises that he gives us. Um, if you'll turn to James 4, 8. James 4, 8. So he promises to draw close to us as we draw closer to him. So, in these tough times, um, especially when you're tempted to grow anxious, I know a lot of people are impacted financially, some impacted spiritually, emotionally during these times. So as we go into this new year, um, you know, one day at a time to praise the Lord each day to seek his kingdom first. Don't go out and sing, well, I got to go make money today. I got to do these things. Before you do those things, 
seek first. And then God says, his promises, says that he will give them uh, those things to you. So when you're tempted to worry or go anxious, remember what you see behind me, that scripture, that all these things will be given. That's all I have. I think I missed a few things, but <laughs> um, I think we all get the message. That, and it's a simple command, but we don't do it. I think um, if we keep that as forefront, all the things that I've went over praying and knowing scripture, um, and the bottom one is, like I said before, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Um, so if you don't have instructions on how to live God's way, guess what? You're not going to live a godly life. So knowing the scriptures, you know, helps you to, and I would, you know, read, in reading this, it's like, wow, that's pretty good. Knowing scriptures help you to avoid temptation. I mean, that's what Jesus did when he was tempted by the devil. What did he do? He just responded with the word. He didn't argue with him. He says, for it is written. So, I like that First Peter 3, 7. You know, your prayers are going, so don't when you, you're, you're not being nice to your wife, and you want to pray to God. You know how that's going to work. Gentlemen, Ephesians 5.25, Love your wives, even when didn't say when she's loving you. It's not conditional. And so treat your wife badly. Don't come down trying to pray. <laughs> God, why aren't you hearing me? Uh, why didn't you hear me? When we dig into his word, there's so much to understand and so much to ask God for, for help with. But as you were giving this message, it took me back to the time of Moses. Back in the book of Deuteronomy, when the people were about to be scattered. And when they were going to be taken up into various different walks of life, they were going to be making idols and all of this stuff. But in Deuteronomy 4, starting in verse 28, it says, There you will serve gods, the work of man's hands, of wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell. And then he goes on with these words, verse 29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you search for him with all your heart and with all your soul. Words given way before Jesus ever came to this earth. Mankind was told to seek God and his ways. You see, even you can seek the Lord while you're driving a truck. <laughs> I got a smile out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can pray to God in he, Got God a smile in his hands, and his hands are on the wheel. All right. <laughs> yeah, on, on Tuesday night, Brother Thang shared um, Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. It says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach statues and ordinances in Israel. So he read this on, on Tuesday and it just, boom, it just caught my attention because here's a man, Ezra, who number one, he seeks the Lord with his heart. He seeks the law of the Lord, which is today would be the, our Bible, right? So he, he prepares his heart to seek the Bible, not only to seek it, just like Lauren read, but to do it, he's wise. And three, to teach it. And um, we can start off by teaching it to our children, to our wives. 
you know, and then expand, 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 expand. Um, but yeah, when I read this, I when, when, when thanks shared this on Tuesday, it just hit me that here's a guy who wakes up, prepares himself to meet the Lord, to do what the Lord says, and to teach it to others. What a great example for us. Yes. When you think about a teacher, before a teacher can teach a lesson, they must learn that lesson for themselves. Right. And you think of how many teachers out there are preparing for the lesson before the students ever come in to hear the message. But that teacher must learn it for himself or herself first and then teach it. Yes. Yes, you see, it is the basic foundation for Christian life. Today we study. Father's praying and reading the scripture, daily worshiping, Bible memorizing. This all thing are the basic foundation for our life. The same way we see in the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This is the Lord of, this book of the Lord should not depart out of thy mouth, see. But thou should meditate during day and night. Yes, absolutely. Yes, that thou may observe to do according to all that this is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. It's very, very important to meditate, reading the scripture, and daily worshiping. We see. It would, worship, it would meditate God's word. In second part, we see thy way, sorry, thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. It's a great privilege for me learning the kinds of passage, how we have to do in our life. Thank you so much. You guys can hear me. Yeah. Daryl, good job. Love it. You know, it says uh, we're called to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Well, back in those days, they had somebody to follow. They, they, you know, Jesus told them that. So they were able to follow him. We don't have anybody physically to follow other than what we have, you know, but we have the word, like Daryl says, we have to stay in our word. We have to stay in, uh, you know, read the word, know the word, and follow it that way. You know, Jesus was our example, so we could follow him that way, yes. But also, it's through worship. It's through the things that we do. It's the connection with our brothers and our fellow, our, and stay in this, these Zoom calls that we're able to do. And that's one way we follow him. We seek him, you know. And that's the way he's going to be there for us. I, and, you know, it says, when you seek me, you will find me. And that's when we find him, when we stay connected. We stay in his word. Like, like uh, Brother Doyle said, what are we building our house on? Our, you know, a solid, solid foundation. You know, me as a builder, I'm not going to build it on sand. I'm going to make sure I have a solid, solid, solid foundation. So I know it'll withstand you know, the, the time. So, yeah, so that's what I have, you know. Deny ourselves daily, guide yourself daily, pick up our cross. And it's the... Uh, the Christ, the hope of glory that's living. I think we lost connections with him. <laughs> no, he, he still had a smile on his face. <laughs> I didn't hear any sirens. CHP is on his tail. <laughs> you know, it was, well, somebody... cool about, it was pretty cool about what he's doing right now. You know, he's driving. He's got, a, I believe that's his grandchild in the car. Yeah. And his grandchild is listening to him talk this way. That's right. And he, watching. Yeah, yeah, he's watching. He's watching, you know, he's listening to his, his grandfather talk about, about, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God. And look at the stuff that's coming out of his heart. And his, and his grandchild gets to see his grandfather talk. Mm -hmm. Teach them to your children. Beautiful memories for that child to remember one day. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, you know, they had Jesus to follow. And we just have the word to follow. And the Hebrews, a lot of the Hebrews, by faith, 
11 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. So <clears throat> it's by faith that we were able to follow the word. A lot of times we must remember it's not not only what we see, but what do we hear? What do we what do we let come into the to the ear gate? And and music can be a beautiful thing if you're listening to the right music. Yeah. Ooh. And what you see was what verse twenty two says: the eye is a lamp of the body. That's right. Your eyes are good, your whole body be full of light. <clears throat> you're looking at darkness, that's what you're going to be full of. Well, remember our condition before we were saved, we were spiritually blind. <clears throat> but now we see some of the spiritual things as that veil was rent in two. When you think about the, the Bibles that are available to us today, think back a few years when the Bibles were not available to the people in their own language. And what the translators did, they, they got that Bible translated into the German language, into the languages that the people could finally get the Bible into their own hands. And they didn't need a priest to be telling them what it was. They had the Bible themselves. But think about today's world, how many people neglect their Bible reading. That's a shame. And if we as men neglect our personal time, what we are doing to ourselves was be, it's a horrible thing to do. So we need a lot of discipline sometimes. And I remember back when I was a teenager and before I went into the service, I didn't have much discipline. But as I was in the service, I learned discipline. And that helped carry through my later years of life was a discipline that I got from the service days. Because that can be carried over into your spiritual life, your spiritual discipline. So it's something to think about because we all have, we all have our different things that goes on in our life that will be a distraction. But there's one thing that we all have in common, and that's time, how we spend our time. And that's so to up us, to us as an individual, because that's a valuable gift and God has given us time. What do we do with it? I could have, uh, I could have chose to not be on a Bible study this morning. The wife asked me last night, she says, are you going to get on the Bible study with the men in the morning? And I said, well, maybe. And then as I thought later that night, I says, I'm definitely going to get on it. So last night I made a decision and I carried it through this morning, but we have to do that. We have to make a decision, a set a time aside and we, we all can't get together at a, like at one o'clock or whatever, but we put this time at eight o'clock this morning and we all took time to get together. So we took that time to join together in a corporate Bible study. Thank you, Brother Daryl. Yes, thank what you, Daryl. What a great way to start 2021, huh? Right. Amen. Seeking the, the Lord. The foundation of Christianity, seeking first the kingdom of God. Praise God. Brother Doy, want to close us up in prayer? Would love to. Thank you. <clears throat> Father, we do thank you, Father, for giving us direction. We thank you, Father, that before we were saved, you came looking for us. And you found us in the, in the condition that we were in. And once we were born again, and we came into a new way of thinking, a new way of living, 
It's been a wonderful time, Lord, a very special time. And Father, as we continue daily to seek your face and to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you. You will make our life through the trials and through the tribulations and through the sickness, through the valleys, through the times of, of lowliness and into the mountains when we get up into the heights. It'll all be so wonderful, Lord. So let us not forget the race that we are in and the prize that is before us. And to help us to be changed, forgive us of our sins, Father. For sometimes, Father, in this life that we are still in, we are still in a, a flesh and we have sinned. We need your forgiveness. We still need your mercy. And you still give us that love. And Father, many times our feet will slip off of the path, but in that loving tenderness, you will guide us back into that correctness and you'll guide us back to that way that we should truly be seeking. Help each man that is here, help him through his trials and various things that they are going through. Continue to help Rudy as he's driving that truck to get to his destination safely. And let us remember what this life is all about. It's to bring you glory and honor. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.